Hello, my name is Cynthia. Welcome to my Flosstube channel. Today I have a special edition of my Floss tube videos to share. Welcome if you are new and welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. I have all of the finishes that I completed in the year 2020 and there are quite a few. <laughs> I think there's over 50 if you count the small soft um, sewing things I made and punch needle and um, lots of different small cross stitch projects. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to show you my first finish of the year, which was a Prairie Schooler Santa. I showed these in a tutorial in December and I endeavored to stitch one a month for the year and I made it through four of these. So this was my first one. I changed the colors. And if you want to know about any of these, um, finishes, I will refer you back to all of my floss tubes for 2020. It'll take too long if I go into all of the changes because I change everything. Um, the next finish I had was something that I was inspired to do by Brenda Gervais from a punch needle pattern. And I used some scrap linen and made this little oil can bird just for fun. It turned out so cute. I used some different DMC colors and some little over one bees with lazy daisies. And I thought this was so pretty. The other one I finished was Valentine's Snowman from, I believe this is a Peach Bottom Primitives or um, Prims by Denise pattern. You can also use these to make gingerbread, which I did, but that was in 2019. So I'm not showing those, but these were just regular snowmen. And I decided to put little hearts and scarves on them. They had little twigs for noses. And I made five or six of them. Um, I've actually given a couple away. So they turned out really cute. And this designer is on Etsy. Super simple to make. You just stitch them up the back. So these will be coming out in January for winter and Valentine's. So super fun. The other one I finished. And I think I'll go in order. I was going to save my favorites for the end. But this is definitely one of my favorites. It was finished on January 31st of this year. I did a stitch along with Kim Goldman and Becky Wilder. And this is one of my bigger finishes, the Birds of a Feather, Blackbird Designs. And it is, I'm afraid, out of print. I've already shared the pattern. I don't hold on to out of print patterns very often. So sorry, I can't help you with that, but hopefully they'll re-release it. They've done that with a lot of the popular patterns. So it has the embroidery around the front and I just love this. I did coffee stain after I stitched and I used lace because my frame was a little too tall. So you can look back and see how I did that if you're interested. That was probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite finishes of the year. The next one I did was another Prairie Schooler dove and it's a another ornament from the Christmas past ornament collection which I did not realize is out of print. <laughs> I apologize. I found it at my uh, local needlework store the Stitch Niche in Arlington, Texas. Um, you could possibly call them and see if they have it. I know someone was interested in looking for it but again it might be re-released. A lot of those um, cardstocks are now being released in paper and there's a good chance it could come out again. The next one I did was an animal cracker. I intended to do three or four of these, but this was a lot more work than I realized. There are thousands and thousands of stitches in this little bird. She's really cute and I enjoyed it. It was just a little more than I expected. So I didn't get to her other um, chicken. I think she's called Henrietta. I have her and I had a couple pieces that I was gonna turn into crackers that aren't stitched that way initially, but. There's Jenny Bird. I did a tutorial on how I finished her. It's not perfect, but it was um, something I enjoyed. And I keep her in a bird cage with a nest from my backyard that has real beautiful speckled eggs in it from another bird that abandoned it. I did some bunnies again from 
Prims by Denise or Peach Bottom Primitive. She goes by both. And this was very primitive. I thought this sort of looked like a piece of bread because it's very um, aged and the ears are funky, but I think it's really cute. I stitched its nose and its eyes. And this is waxed twine that I did myself with some melted wax. So I had made three or four, four of these and I gave away three. So she will have some more friends this Easter and I actually have another bunny pattern that's gonna be, I think, even cuter and I'm looking forward to that. The next one I finished was a punch needle Christmas bird. I might try to insert a picture here. Um, I have a way of putting all of my projects into Pinterest so that I have an entire board at the end of the year that shows all of my punch, all of my finishes together. And um, if you're interested in that, I might put at the end what that looks like so that you can take your photos of your images from um, Instagram or just from your camera, collect them all on Pinterest. And it doesn't have to be a public board. It could be private. And then they will all be displayed for you at the end of the year. So you can know what you finished. If you don't like to write things down, I actually went through Instagram and wrote down what I had posted. So Instagram's kind of my um, online journal for all of my stitching. A lot of y'all do that that way as well. But the punch needle bird was a my very first punch needle gifted by a viewer. And I actually finished it and sent that back to her because she had sent me the um, partially started project and so I completed that for her and sent it back as a gift and a thank you. I also had a couple of little freebies from Snowflower Diaries. These are on um, Pinterest is where I found it and I used my own threads on this and kind of did some more um, embroidery finishing that I hadn't ever tried before. I found those antique buttons at a flea market and so or at a uh, antique mall right before things shut down I'm afraid but she is super cute that little chick and I over dyed those flosses myself the purple ones from some floss my friend Tamara gave me so that was a f probably my first pillow I ever made <laughs> a lot of these things were firsts for me and very much a learning experience so part of you know just trying to finish things on your own and trying to make some new um, techniques, it's trial and error. <laughs> some of them turned out great, but now I know better. So that's why um, I enjoy trying new things. I can always learn. The other thing I finished around that time was my um, Little House Needleworks ABCs. I didn't finish autumn in 2020. I finished that in 2019, so I didn't have that to show, but this was my first ABCs of the year that I finished, and I love the way it turned out. I hand dyed this Ada in a, um, I think it was a gray and a maybe mint or aqua mix. It turned out really sage kind of. And then these dyes were, or these threads, I don't think I used any of the called for. Again, you can refer back to the episode. And I believe I shared this thread conversion the best I could on Instagram from a viewer that asked for it. I really like the way those colors fit in my decor. They're very soft and spring-like. So that one was fun. I also did a lot of gifts around this time. I did, um, and I'll insert a picture of this here. I did two pillows that were the Sewing Sisters. I can't remember if that's what it's called. It's a freebie from the Primitive Hair. And I did two of those, one for Helen and one for Lynette. I also did three strawberries um, that were meant to drape over a sampler for my friend Becky, my friend Kim, and another for um, another friend. So that's three finishes that I did put one of those on Instagram. I'll insert that here. And then we're on to my second favorite, if not tied for first favorite, the Stacy Nash Miss Baxter's house. This was probably the largest finished that I made in 2020. I can't fit in there with it. I have a whole video about all the changes I made. There were quite a few. I made it more red and I left off the bottom because this frame that my mom gave me, I thought was a perfect match for this style and it doesn't have room for the bottom. So a little bit of a pass there, but I did use some of the called for the cranberry on her dress and sub DMCs for that cabin. This is one of my favorite pieces. It hangs 
in my front room all year long. So love that second favorite or tied for first favorite on May 19th. I finished actually before that on May 9th, I found these patterns. Um, I don't think these are Denise's. I think these were Chestnut Junction for stars. I had a couple friends, Kim and Celeste make these, um, as well. They're super fun and, um, easy. You stuff the back and then the top is just a flat, um, sandwich and you kind of pucker them together. So I filled a bowl with these and it made a really cute display. And I used some old buttons from my grandma's box, especially I liked this, um, star one. I'd always wanted to do something with that. And so I was glad to finally get that. It looks like I made five of these and I know I gave one to my mom. So I made six of those. I'm moving into patriotic things now. So you can see I um, followed my capsule pretty well as far as making a box for all of my um, holidays and just kind of working out of that box. There's lots in there left still to be done next year, but I was really happy with all I could get done. So here's Hurrah by, I think that's what it's called, by Pineberry Lane. It's a very cute um, design. I made her hat or her crown sparkly. I think you can finally see that. I didn't show it very well the first time. And I learned a new finish that I didn't really execute super well. But again, it's a learning process. This fabric was um, visible from the back in the gate that I have this on. So I made it a fully finished kind of quilt and it's um really cute so highly recommend these patterns you can get them on pdf and i have a couple more to do this year i just really like having one of these on the go because they're so simple and and just so cute the um other primitive piece i made around the same time it looks like on may the 16th this um chestnut junction sheep it was coming apart. I need to re-glue it. And it wasn't my favorite finish, but I do like it. I think I had some stuffing issues with its neck, and I think I could probably do a better job now, but a lot of y'all really like sheep. And this one is really cute. It has stick legs and a little, um, I guess, saddle, <laughs> like you would ride it. But I changed the words. I can't remember what it said. I think it just said sheep, and I put free because it's in my patriotic display with those other stars. So that was finished on May 16th. On the 17th, I was able to finish a um, prey schooler. I had started this on a 24 hour marathon along with Miss Baxter. I had a lot of posts of that work. So that one was a puppy dog. That looks like my old beagle I had. I have a summer ABCs. That was a really popular conversion because the top of this usually says apples. And I changed it to a bunting inspired by Carol Fun on Instagram. I also think um, Life with Miss Sassy did that as well, but she did a different um, style. She did the house with the flag, which I was inspired to by and my colors are completely different. I do have a PDF file if you are interested in this conversion. It's almost like a murky um, hand dyed Ada that I ended up with, not by um, design, but almost by accident. I thought this fabric was ruined and <laughs> then I thought, well, let me just try it. And I really like it because the whites really show like on ice cream and lemonade. So I do have a video detailing all of these changes. A lot of them are DMC, but I think I also have some country redwood in there. Love the way that turned out. It had a bow with some felt, the same that that sheep's wearing. I kind of had it on its stand like that. So that was all stored in this um, curio cabinet behind me. I keep these things out all year long because I like to have them kind of safely tucked away instead of in a tub that may or may not be um, knocked over. So these are um, how I'm storing them now. I also made, and I don't think I showed these on Instagram or even really very much in the video, but I made a few little embroidery uh, pillows. This is so crooked. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I'll just pretend it was done by a child, right? But these pillows, I didn't have a pattern for. I just thought it would be cute to do some embroidery and it kind of spurred more embroidery. Oh, 
I just realized I forgot another piece. I'll have to insert a picture. But yeah, this was the start of some embroidery projects. So that was fun to get that inspiration. I had a next capsule of honeybee things. I had a whole month and a half pretty much of stitching bee related items. My parents kept bees and I just really like the summertime bees. Here's a punch needle that I adapted from Primitive Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I finally learned how to say that. <laughs> and I'm not the best punch needle, um, needler? How do you say that? <laughs> I'm not the best at this, but it's all learning. And I do love that bird. I adapted it from a, a larger sheep that was underneath here. And I just wanted the bird and I liked the bees. They kind of look like sunflowers that I made as well as this little paddle. Another one of my favorite finishes. It's so small but I thought it was really pretty the way it came together on this little board from Hobby Lobby. I still have a few of those left, but um, that's a freebie from Fox and Rabbit Designs from the Pandemic Stitches, the Be Well Stitches, and it's a really cute one. Again, I detail all of those finishes in the videos throughout the year, so you can always go back and look at that if you wanna see more how that's done. Here's the first embroidery piece I tried from Kathy Schmitz. She has um, a website that has a lot of PDF patterns. This is for $1. I added beads up there. Those weren't charted and I had um, the different colors. I thought it was just one color at first, but it does have like some tweeted threads there along the edge and it has um, satin stitches at the top. I made it into just a hanging tag with felt on the back and some antique lace that I don't think is handmade like I first thought, but that's okay. And then I also started experimenting with my sari silk, which I love. So this kind of hangs with some beads and, and bells on my bee display, which is on Instagram. I had a berry. I've made some of these for my mom and I'd made the others for friends. So this is about my fifth one that I've made. And I finally got a really nice point. Putting yarn at the bottom is a really good tip. Erica Michaels designed this berry. It is not finished the way she did. Um, hers had little tiny leaves at the top and I almost thought it looked kind of like a carrot that way. So I make bigger leaves with felt and here's some more of that silk. Sorry, this is actually the second sorry I ordered because it was, un it was bleached. They take out the color of the original garments and I put I know blue flowers on there that were supposed to be white and that is a really um, fun finish and turned out even better than I hoped. The bell goes on a lot of my little finishes just because it makes me happy to hear it. The honeybee cup was a really popular finish. I love the way this color change made Priscilla and Chelsea's pattern a little more primitive, which is more my taste. I also experimented with a basket weave kind of pattern that was satin stitches going different directions. I made it up myself. I don't know if it's actually done in the way that it's, you know, officially supposed to, but I just made it work. And I had some over one bees and little lazy daisy wings. I learned that from a Brenda Gervais pattern. So again, I talk more about how I got this in this drawer from Hobby Lobby. Um, here's the back. I noticed this price has gone up a little bit, but they have these back in the floral department and I have another one that I can use with some styrofoam. It's a really cute finish, especially for Priscilla's cups. So there's that one. I had one other bee finish that I snuck in at the bottom. Actually, I've gotten a little out of order. That's okay. I had a, uh, another 4th of July one that came late. <laughs> That's why I'm out of order. On um, August 1st, I ended up finishing this, which was supposed to be in um, my 4th of July decor, but it just came a little later because those poppies took a long time for me to figure out. All those um, leaves and different, um, I don't know, the counting was difficult on that little bunch of flowers there, but I love the way this turned out. And it doesn't perfectly fit in this frame or match, but for now I like it. Someone told me I needed to paint this frame green, but I have it in my front area where 
all my colors are real shabby chic and pale, so it looks better as a chalk white. I also had the other, um, page or not patriotic, the other sheep cart. And I'll show you that in a minute that I finished. I had the potting shed finished on August 29th. Here she is. She stays out all year as well because my room in the front is kind of a garden theme. And I found this chalkboard. It's a, yeah, it still has the tag from, that looks like a Hobby Lobby clearance, doesn't it? Something I picked up a while ago. It's metal, it's metal so I could, could have magneted that on, but I just glued it because I want it to stay in here. And I did a lot of changes. I dyed that trim myself and dyed some of those glosses darker. When they came, they weren't what I had hoped. So I did a lot of changes on this one, but it is one of my top three finishes, I would say. I love the way it's real soft and antique looking. Brenda Gervais is just so talented. The uh, next finish moves into my pumpkin plans. I had so many um, little projects I did during the great pumpkin sale where we were stitching pumpkins in the month of October, but I got an early start on some of them because I had so many. This was just a little freebie that um, gave me some over one lettering practice that I need still. Sorry if I'm bumping that heart. I think it's actually the fan that's moving it. This was so cute with the different pieced um, Kansas Trouble quilt blocks, charm packs, and some of my hand dyed corduroy. I actually used sawdust for the first time on this too, and I, I won't go back. I love sawdust. There's some measure tape and there's lots of details that turned out really cute on this, and I keep it in a bowl downstairs when it's fall, of course. After the pumpkins and pins, I worked on Matilda Hornbuckle. She was a new release from Not Forgotten Farm, previously only available in a magazine, now available, I believe still, on PDF. So I printed it off right away because I'd been looking for that pattern. I changed the colors, of course, and I put it on a hand-dyed Ada um, that I intended to look like murky. And I think it does. Turned out pretty well. She's super cute in this frame in my hallway. I keep my halls, uh, my fall things in the hallway downstairs that's painted caramel, kind of a brown, warm color, and they look good there all year round. So all my fall stuff that's framed stays on that wall. I did some, this one is not a primitive designer I've used before, and I wouldn't really recommend the patterns for this um, cat experiment. I didn't feel like they were really very detailed or helpful um, other than I was just able to copy the outline of this cat, which I don't think I could have done on my own. He's pretty creepy, <laughs> but she, I mean, and but she's pretty cute. And she's a shinier finish, whereas my other um, primitive pieces are really more just kind of a, you know, soft muslin. This one has a clear coat on it. It's supposed to be some kind of liquid laminate, but I used Mod Podge. Mod Podge. So this one I like better as far as the face, but it was just something to do and experiment with. It was fun. So these guys turned out pretty cute. I made this one up myself, I think, because it's a copy of his of her pumpkin. But these are just like little wands that I stuck in some hand-painted sunflowers that I made and it turned out to be a cute display. So here's these three Halloween finishes as we're moving into some spooky stuff. These monster pillows were spooky but cute. I had three embroideries from um, Hudson Holidays Designs. She has some great um, art. She's just a, a really talented artist. She's been in publications like Somerset Studios and things like that. And these were super fun. I really like the way they turned out. They were easy. Just kind of following the lines after you trace them. And I did use sawdust again with this black check fabric and some hand dyed felt and sari ribbon. Just, I really like the way these all turned out together. And then I had the fourth um, from my mom's pillow um, or tea towel she gave me and I put a spider on the back of that one. So that one's not stuffed as full, but it matches them very well. Happy Halloween stuff. And a last Halloween finish, I believe, was um, Halloween medley. 
this was a another piece of that hand dyed Ada, just a small scrap, and I didn't pick any of the colors that were called for. I just used what I had. I did have some buttons on there from another piece I'm still working on. That is a trick or treat smell my feet. The seller included a whole button pack that I hadn't realized I was originally bidding on. And so I've been using those on other Halloween finishes like the candy and the corn. And this, I like these Halloween medleys. They're really small and cute and, um, or not the Halloween medleys, the medley patterns by Heart and Hand. They're just super quick and I have, I think three finished. So while I am showing that, I just saw two finishes. I did not put on my spring um, Instagram for some reason. I left this off. It was my daughter's idea to make a purple witch with a bunny and it's not fully finished. I was going to do some kind of trim and bows, but I'll put that out in springtime. These Snowflower Diaries have um, a witch for every season. There's a Christmas one with a snowman and then there's this one for spring, a pumpkin for fall and um, there's just the four, but they're super cute. And she looks the same in all of them. She just has a different rider. So those are fun. And then I also have this punch needle from um, Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine that I have not done anything with yet. I finished it way out of season. It was long past spring, but it's just kind of on this piece of um, cloth and weaver's cloth. And I will either finish this on a book or possibly in a, a frame. It's a really cute design and it was my first attempt at lettering. So that's a Teresa Kogut and it is available as an individual chart. I think it's called Bunny Row or something because of the carrots, but that's a really cute one. I want to do more of Teresa Kogut's punch needle for sure. I just haven't done any yet. Um, at the end of October, I did another ornament um, and it's downstairs. I'll insert a picture. I finished my Plum Street 12th day, um, the free sal that she put out. I put out day one of that series. I'll be working on that throughout the next year. I'll show that more in my plans in my next video. And then I had the um, Boo Bobby. This was a little bit late. This was in the middle of November. I wanted it to, for Halloween, but didn't quite make it. And I talked about how I frame this. It matches somewhat my patriotic poppies. They're kind of a pair together. And this is the same frame, but this one's painted white and this one I left the color. This one was really yellowed and gross, so I painted it white. But this one I liked for the color of the um, linen, and so I kept it. They actually don't hang in the same spot like I intended. This is down in my fall hallway. And this one stays up here in my, the Patriotic Poppy stays up here. So that was a November finish. I almost didn't think I was going to get it out this year, but I'm glad I did. I will possibly reframe that, but we'll see. And then I had some Christmas. I forgot to bring my Kringle embroidery that I put on a shutter. I will insert a picture of that here. And I had some... Bell Snickle Santas that I showed. All of this is really recent, so I'm gonna go quicker because you've already seen these. This is the only one I kept. The other two have been given away and Sheila, yours is coming. <laughs> Sorry if it's not to you yet, but it's ready. I also had um, this free sal from Brenda Gervais. Some people are still showing that they're working on this Mary and Minty free stitch along that she shared on her Facebook. And I'm also sending that out to that subscriber that asked, um, like I said, I haven't been to the post office yet, but I have a few things going out. This finish was one I haven't shown yet. Let me show this one first. I showed this one in my last video, the winter ABCs on the stand. It's still there because of course it's still winter. So I really like the way this turned out and I used the other snowflake and this is the final finish that I have to share. I have not shown it yet um, on 
floss tube just on my Instagram. This was a freebie from Melissa of Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. And I actually did it on the back of the tray because the front side was painted with some um, pastels to say a flower market, sew your own. And I put it with all my sunflowers. I intended initially to rinse this off and start using it for finishes, but I didn't want to. I really like this sunflower I drew. So I left it and on the back, now I can put some other finishes. I'm trying to do some things. Um, I don't want to be such a one note with bows on everything. For me, it got a little bit busy. So I experimented with just a simple uh, snowflake. It's not even painted. It's just wood with a magnet on the back. And yeah, you can see how rusty this thing is. But um, I thought that looked really pretty. Just kind of more subdued a little bit. I mean, it's still a lot going on, but it's not um, quite a same same fabric underneath, all of it on sticky board and mat board, and just simply finished. I kept off some of the border. I told you I would, but my polka dot fabric was pretty busy. So this one was super cute. I love that design. Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing. So that concludes my finished parade for 2020. All in all, depending on how you count it, I had about 31 cross stitches and I didn't count those individual fabric pieces. Um, if I did, it was over 50. So I kind of lost count, but I will try to insert at the end here, just a quick view of my Pinterest board where I collect all of this information so that I can see it at the end of the year. And I hope that you enjoyed that, found some inspiration, intend to try some new techniques in 2021 for finishing, not putting things away in a box under your bed, but enjoying them and um, sharing them with your family. So I hope you're having a great start to your new year and spending time with family. And I will be back to talk with you soon about plans. Thanks for watching. Here's my whip board on Pinterest. It has all the things I've worked on and finished together in one section called whips. There's 95 before I remove the finishes. Here's all the different categories I have. The seasons and the capsules, including farm and garden, that's all the time. And here's the section called finished. I just move each one into that. And then I can organize it and select all of that finished section and move it into a new board. And that deletes the finishes from my whip board to 44 from the 51 finishes that I had. It keeps them all in one place.